Hey everybody, it's your friend and your favorite hardware Canuck, Gardner, the Linux gamer. Um, I'm talking to you today about my uh, Linux production workflow because holy damn did my video from last week blow up. Um, now I wanted to talk about two things. The first thing being the equipment that I use. A bunch of people in my last video asked why I didn't go into that uh, in my previous video. And the answer is it didn't make sense in that video, I don't think. So I wanted to make this one just to clear some of this up. Now, earlier this year, I created, well, early, early this year, January 1st, like literally the first day of the year, uh, I created a video called My Linux Production Workflow. And I'm gonna update that because some of the stuff in there isn't um, particularly accurate anymore. Now, I actually use a Nikon D5200 uh, camera, and it's really nice. It encodes 1080p video at uh, 30 frames a second, H.264 format, and, and it all does it in an MOV container. It works great, actually. It's a, it's a really nice camera. I really like it. Excellent video quality. And uh, I have a little uh, polarizing filter. Uh, it's great. I also use this uh, Canon Vixia HFR72 uh, camcorder. And this camcorder I use for some B-roll. It has really nice uh, anti-shake. Uh, also, um, it ha I use it for as a webcam because I have a power cable for it and I plug it into my uh, Avermedia Live Gear Portable 2 and pipe it into OBS and it works great as a webcam. I also use a Yamaha MG10 XU mixing board. Uh, it provides digital and analog pulse audio devices as well as uh, pipe audio right out of my PC through the built-in audio cable and pipe it right into this machine. Um, this is a really nice mixing board. It has 10 channels, gives me granular control over um, the volume, the equalizer, the first two channels have a compressor built in, which is how I get my voice to sound so buttery smooth. Also, um, there's built in effects, like I can turn this effect on right here. And now I'm echoing. So there you go. Also, uh, but there's like, uh, I think there's something like 60 effects in here. Uh, 24. 24 and 60 are basically the same thing, right? Um, in each channel can actually have effects set up individually. You can also pan left and pan right, just like that, on each channel individually. It's really nice. I can also, uh, I use the mixing board a lot during my live streams where I can, so I can, without having to switch out of the game that I'm playing and go into OBS and adjust the volume that way, I can oftentimes just pipe the audio coming from Pulse Audio back into over USB into uh, uh, into OBS and I can adjust the volume of that uh, right right here on my mixing board on my desk it's it's really nice I have two microphones this one that I'm using right now is the GXL two two zero zero and this microphone comes from CAD and it's a really nice microphone it sounds phenomenal I only paid like hundred and fifty dollars for it but I think it sounds great I also have this Audio Technica AT2035. And this is a really good mic. I like uh, what it does, but it also is very fickle. And um, I only use it in certain conditions. Like uh, if I'm recording with someone else, I'll often give them this microphone. You know, if I'm doing a live stream or something like that. It's a good mic. I paid more for it. And I think it sounds not quite as good as this this microphone that I'm using right now. But it works well, and it you know through my mixing board, they both work over XLR. It's it's fantastic. Oh, and for a long time, I was using the Tascam DR40 linear PCM recorder. And this this device is great. Um, I used it for uh, every episode of Ten Second Eats um, on my other my old other channel. Uh, but I also used it on when I was doing like stand up in front of the in front of the comedy wall up there <laughs> in my older videos. This was this is a good microphone, the DR40. Uh, I really like it. It has great quality sound. Um, the only problem is it's very directional. So if you move left or right just a little tiny bit, it doesn't uh, pick up your voice super great if you don't keep like perfectly still. Um, but it is a good mic and I plan on using it 
uh, in future projects for sure. And I also use the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable 2. And this is a great HD, uh, HDMI capture device. Um, color reproduction is pretty good. Uh, using it for like actual live footage encoding is pretty accurate. Uh, it will, I also use it to pipe in, like I said earlier, the, uh, the camcorder's HDMI feed into OBS, which, you know, it works great doing that. Um, I also use it to capture gameplay footage, but I haven't done that in a while. I'm sorry. A lot of people ask me about the screens that I use because I have two and I'm running in GNOME 3 and people are like, how do you have multiple screens working on Linux, no less? Well, the fact is, I don't, I've never had a problem running multiple screens, um, ever. Uh, I have an LG uh, 27 MP33 and I don't know what this one is. This is an Asus something or other. And uh, they're both really good screens. They um, One of them has a worse uh, mode switching capability. The Asus just takes like forever. And I, it kind of annoys me, but it also has a really good, uh, they both have good color depth. They're both 1080p. I don't see a reason to go to 4K. I really, you know, if you go to 4K, it's like, oh, hey, I'm at 4K now and everything looks small. So I'm going to like crank up the point of the font so that I have le I have the same amount of screen real estate as I did before. And now my CPU and GPU are working twice as hard. I don't see, I don't see a reason to go up to it. Plus it's not well supported in Linux quite yet. So right now I'm using 1080p. Um, and I might upgrade at some point, but I just, it's diminishing returns at this point. In my opinion, you can disagree with me if you want. Feel free, leave a comment down below. Tell me how much of an idiot I am. I'll, I'll be sure to use your comment in one of my future videos. <laughs> so I also use software. Um, software is really the thing that's most relevant to Linux video production. Primarily, I use Caden Live to do most of, if not all of my editing. Um, Caden Live is fantastic, it's robust, and it works great for what I need. That is namely um, like locking an audio clip to a video clip and then editing both simultaneously, um, which I do all the time. That's basically what my videos are now. Uh, but I also use Caden Live to do my audio editing for the uh, the podcast and some people might be like what why would you do that and it's because Caden Live allows me to synchronize uh, multiple audio tracks and edit them all at once and um, I haven't been able to really find <laughs> another uh, audio program that can do that as fast and as efficiently as Caden Live does I haven't gone looking for one if you know of one let me know and I'll, I'll try it out uh, but I really like Caden Live. Um, I have stopped using Ocean Audio or Oaken Audio um, because it was freeware and not free and open source software. Um, I decided that I didn't want to include it in my channel anymore. Um, so I now use Audacity for audio processing. Um, namely when I have someone else uh, in a need to like perform like compression and limiting on their, on their uh, audio feed, I will do that in audacity raven and i had zappa on the podcast and there was actually quite a bit of feedback in his raw audio so i went into audacity and performed some uh, filtering of his feed and i uh, was able to reduce a lot of that feedback i also in terms of software and production i am now using nextcloud uh, like I used to use Google Docs and I hated the fact that I used Google Docs. So the fact that I now have my server behind me running Nextcloud, uh, running a bunch of different software, uh, you know, Raven and I work uh, all the time, like writing up the show notes for the next episode of the podcast. And um, it, we use Nextcloud to do that, to collaborate, to uh, to, I use I have um, the RSS reader uh, app for Nextcloud, and um, that works tremendously well. And I'm able to like sift through news stories really quickly and highlight news stories that I want to cover on the show. Um, a Nextcloud, I can't say enough good things. I also have the password manager, and the password manager just kicks ass. I love it, and uh, I also use GIMP a lot 
for uh, photo editing and for thumbnails. Um, GIMP is super duper powerful. I think it's just as powerful as uh, any version of Photoshop I've ever used. Um, you just have to know how to use it. it. And it's really good. I really, really like GIMP. I recommend it to everybody. And I don't think I mentioned this in my previous uh, Linux production workflow video, but I use OBS a lot. I use it to capture my screen. I use it to do my live streams. And you should follow me, uh, twitch.tv slash Zondak. That's X-O-N-D-A-K. I stream twice a week over there, uh, typically uh, either Fridays or Saturdays, and usually Sundays to when I'm editing my videos. And um, yeah, uh, it, it, OBS is extremely powerful, super simple to use, uh, and and just it's it's incredibly awesome. I really love OBS. Um, so yeah, that's that's my video. This is a bit off the cuff, which a lot of my videos have have been recently. And I feel like everybody likes the off the cuff stuff more than than the like super scripted uh, performance that I was doing before. So yeah, people tell me that they, they like this format better. So I think I'm gonna keep doing it. But what do you think? You want me to keep doing photo, uh, stuff like this? You want me to keep uh, uh, doing the off the cuff deal? You like it when I drink my, my, uh, my uh, organic mint tea? Let me know down in the comments, would you? Um, I sure do appreciate you guys coming here and hanging out with me for a little while every every Monday and Friday. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to the audio feed of the podcast over at offtopical.net. Um, you can also check out uh, you can also check me out on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Zondak, uh, and you can help support the show on Patreon. And my Patreon contributors are some of the coolest people in the world. Uh, these guys donate uh, monthly to my channel and make what I do here possible. So I just wanted to give a huge shout out to, uh, to my Patreon contributors because, man, those guys are just so rad and uh, they help make this show possible. So... Thank you for watching. This has been another episode of Gardner sits in front of his computer and talks to you guys. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. I'm enjoying this journey that we're on together. And uh, if you don't mind, make sure you hit that subscribe button because it really helps the show. Um, but that's all for now. And I'll talk to you later. <laughs>